Hi, and welcome to another narration presented by yours truly, Cryptids Roost. Please be so kind as to throw punch the like button and smack the ass of the subscription button as well. And remember to tap the notification bell and then select all. That way you'll receive all notifications each time I upload a new video. Oh, and don't forget to share the video far and wide. This will all help with YouTube's algorithm and will help promote the channel more. If you enjoy listening to the following story, be sure to pop over to the author's Reddit profile and drop them a line, or even give them a glowing review. I'm sure they would appreciate it. The link to their Reddit profile will be below in the description. This awesome author has a new novel available on Amazon, titled Beneath the Asylum by Jordan Group. So go grab yourself a copy of this awesome book I already have. The links for the book will be below in the description. So grab your coffee, sit back and enjoy the show. And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is not. Dungeons and Darkness Part 1 This fantastic series is written by Jay Group, a wonderful author over on Reddit's No Sleep subreddit. I was about 17 years old when all this happened. My brother Noel was working the overnight shift at a convenience store in town and I went with my friend Tom to visit him. We entered the shop around midnight and found him sitting behind the counter looking bored. The well lit store was well stocked full of mostly junk food and soft drinks. I noticed just inside the entrance that a one dollar coin was sitting on the polished floor. It was gleaming and looked brand new. Reaching down, I tried to pick it off the floor and found it wouldn't come up. What the hell? Tom pushed me out of the way and tried to pick it up himself and found the same thing. It was stuck to the floor. Noel burst out laughing from behind the counter. Oh man, you guys are so gullible. People have been falling for that all night. What you do? Super glue it to the floor? He nodded and kept laughing. Alright, I guess that's kind of funny. We sat with him behind the counter and talked for a while, waiting for my other friend Brad to show up. He was supposed to bring a board game that he had found in his basement. Every once in a while a customer would come in and we would try not to laugh when they attempted to pick up the coin unsuccessfully. Some would give up right away. Brothers got extremely frustrated and would pull out their car keys or use their fingernails to try and pry it up from the floor. Part of me couldn't help but wonder if Noel was going to get into trouble when his boss came in the morning and found the coin still fastened securely to the floor. Finally Brad came in with a backpack and a dusty box in his hands. It was a black cardboard box ripped and cracked at the corners. I noticed the bag he was carrying was clinking as well, like it was full of glass bottles. The box containing the board game had faint writing on it that looked medieval and archaic. It read, Dungeons and Darkness. That's weird. I've heard of Dungeons and Dragons, but not Dungeons and Darkness, I said to Brad, after we had exchanged greetings. Yes, same here. We were tearing apart the basement doing renovations and we found the box under the stairs. It was in a burlap sack along with these really old bottles of coca cola. He opened up his backpack and pulled out several tall glass bottles with the distinctive feminine curves of coke containers. But there was no writing on them. Are you sure these are coca cola? It doesn't say it on the bottles. I'm pretty sure. Anyways, I'm going to drink one and see how it tastes. Tom, Noel and I laughed and tried to convince him that was a terrible idea. The bottles looked like they were from a century ago. His house was built in the early 1900s, so there's no way of knowing when they were boarded up under the stairs in his basement. I had them in the fridge. Come on guys, 
Don't you want to try and see what 100 year old coke tastes like? We were young and bored and stupid, so we agreed. He handed each of us a bottle and I felt the coolness of it in my hands. Holding it up, I looked at the liquid inside the bottle. It had a vague vermilion shade to it at the edges when held up to the fluorescence. We each opened up our bottles and took a sip. It was sweet and bubbly, like a soft drink, but not quite. The sugary beverage was cool and refreshing. It tasted delicious despite its age, but was nothing like Coca-Cola. See, what did I tell you? Man, that's good. Brad looked very satisfied with himself. Wanna set up this board game? Noel asked, sipping his drink. We got the game board laid out and picked our characters. I was a paladin. Noel chose a barbarian. Brad picked an elven archer and Tom decided upon a dwarf after a long period of deliberation. Each character had a game card which showed their abilities and a special move which could be used only once per game. We also received a starting weapon, in my case a sword. The starting location on the map where we would begin the game was, interestingly enough, labelled Shop. It was about then that we noticed there were no dice with the game. The instructions were also missing. There was no clear direction on how to start playing other than to put our game pieces on the start location in the shop. The only other items in the game box were a stack of cards, which Brad had shuffled and set aside the game board. There was nothing to do but draw a card from the stack, so I did and read it out loud. A visitor arrives at the shop. I flipped the card over and looked at the back of it, thinking there had to be more, but there wasn't. Taking a long sip of my syrupy sweet drink, I looked up at the sound of a bell ringing above the door as it opened. My mind was spinning as I gazed confusedly around the room. Bolting up from my chair, I gasped. It was like we had been transported somehow to a shop in a medieval fantasy world. Potions and vials lined the shelves of the walls. Herbs hung from the ceiling as well as furs and dried meats. Instead of fluorescence, the store was now dimly lit by flickering torches and candlelight. Oh man, what was in that drink? I asked Brad, feeling dizzy. He was standing up too, and all of us were looking around the room in a delirious confusion. Blast it! What sort of black magic spellery did you boys cast on this here gold piece to bind it to the floorboards like this? The customer at the door was on his hands and knees trying to pull up the coin from the floor. What the hell is going on? Noel looked extremely worried. The man on his hands and knees by the door eventually stood up looking slightly embarrassed. He was wearing long blue robes and a floppy pointed hat. He had a long white beard and carried a tall wooden staff with a large jewel set into the top of it. His bushy eyebrows went up as he looked over at all of us staring at him. Why, I suppose it's some sort of jest then. A deep throated laugh poured out of him then. It was a good natured laugh and he walked foot towards us with a wide grin on his face. Oh, you boys should think yourselves quite clever, pulling one over on a wizard such as myself. I am quite a prominent figure around these parts, you should know. We all stared at him, our jaws hanging down. Right, well then, I'll take three red potions if you don't mind. I've got the silver for it, don't worry. I looked to see behind the counter were rows and rows of vials containing potions of various colours and shades. Picking up a red one, I saw it had a heart shape on the front of it. Let me guess, healing potion? I asked him, feeling as if I was in a dream, but knowing somehow that I was not. You should know, you're the shopkeeper, aren't you? Of course, red potions are for healing. Green for mana, blue for... What am I telling you for? Here, give me those. I've got a date with the dragon and I can't be late for it. 
he slammed his silver pieces on the wooden counter and grabbed three potions for himself and stomped out angrily muttering under his breath. We all stayed silent for a minute after he left, still in complete shock. What the hell was in those drinks Brad? Tom finally shouted. All of our bottles stood empty and I immediately regretted finishing it so quickly. But it had been pretty tasty. Look guys, our pieces moved on the game board. Noel was staring at the board and he was right. The pieces moved forward to the next location. It says dungeon entrance, I noticed looking at the board. I don't like the sounds of that. Looking up, I saw a wooden sign which was swinging at the back of the store as if it had just been struck by a strong wind. It was squeaking, hanging from a pair of rusty chains. I could have sworn it hadn't been there a second ago. Dungeons and Darkness, it read. An arrow was pointing down the staircase which had also recently appeared at the back of the store. The cards were missing from the game board. I mentioned this to the other guys. I think we're supposed to go down there, said Noel. Oh no, hell no, I'm not going down there, Tom was saying, looking extremely nervous. I get the feeling it's the only way out of here, I said, pointing at the game board. At the very end, at the top of the board, after the dungeons, was a tile marked finish. Nope, not going down those stairs. Not doing it. I'm going to stay right here until the century-old hallucinogenic soft drinks wear off. Suddenly, the entire room began to shake, and the walls started to move in towards us, as if they were on rollers. They began to close in on us, and the room shrunk smaller and smaller, turning it from a square-shaped room into a hallway. The wood beams crushed under the shelves in the way and the bottles fell to the floor, glass vials breaking and shattering. Oh hell, I don't think we have a choice guys, I yelled running towards the stairs. Tom and Brad ran after me and reluctantly Noel came too, grabbing a few red potions quickly as he left the area behind the counter. I watched as the entire shop was crushed and the walls closed off the door behind us, leaving us at the top of the strange staircase. Stone steps led downwards and torches lined the rough hewn brick walls. We made our way down and eventually reached the lower level. Weapons were hanging from a rack down there waiting for us. A sword with a red cross on the hilt for the paladin. A large double sided steel axe for the dwarf a bow and quiver of arrows for the elven archer and a big club for the barbarian. I don't know how the hell you're going to carry that thing, Noel, I said looking over to him, but then I stopped short when I saw Noel had grown by about three feet and was now a towering hulk with wide shoulders wearing furs and leather boots. Tom had become a squat dwarf with a long braided orange beard. He wore black chainmail armour and had a square shaped helmet atop his head. He had a large gut, a sword also, which overhung his belt. Brad still had his familiar facial features, but had pointed ears now and long flowing blonde hair. He wore green leather armour and with quick easy movements threw the quiver over his shoulder and picked up the bow in his hands. I grabbed the sword and found that when I looked down I was wearing gleaming white gold armour with a red cross on the breast. Well, I guess we're all set, I said, looking into the darkness of the dungeon ahead. Only one way to go, forward. From the darkness ahead, a piercing scream shattered the silence, an echoing howl of such pain and terror that my heart skipped a beat. I felt sweat beating on my forehead suddenly. My heart began to hammer and pound in my chest and I tried to control the fear in my voice. Come on guys, we got this. Stepping forward, we left the flickering glow of torches in the stairway and were immediately swallowed up 
by darkness. Part 2. Skeletons Guard the Gates The four of us moved silently through the dark tunnels of the dungeon. Rats squeaked and ran underfoot, and I began to see the shapes of them as my eyes adjusted. Finally, after walking for a long while, there was a flickering light up ahead. As we approached, I saw two guards standing in front of a wrought iron gate. Once we were within a few yards of them, I managed to see their grim visages. They had no flesh upon their faces. I could see right into their skeletal remains of their skulls, and could discern no brains within them, only shadows. Perhaps that explains what happens next. Who goes there? The one on the right commanded. Uh, hello, I said. Jordan, and Noel, Brad, and Tom. Can we go through the gate, please? We're trying to get home. Oh, well, aren't you a gracious bunch? They're very polite, Gregor. I don't think we've ever had one who said please before. You're right, Killick. They're quite well mannered, but that's not the point. This is supposed to be a challenge. The challenge is to defeat the skeleton guards at the entrance gate, not to be polite to them. Well, I can't see why an exception can't be made now and again. It isn't up to you. We've been over this before. They continued bickering back and forth for a minute, and I got a bit concerned. The skeleton guards had thick plate mail armour and large heavy looking swords. I guessed they would be formidable foes, despite their obvious lack of grey matter. I just want to say, you guys are doing an excellent job, I coaxed, trying to persuade them with further kindness. And if I had to run into your manager further along in the dungeon, I'm going to pass along my positive comments to him. You can count on that. Really? The one on the left raised his eyebrows. Definitely. I'd say you're both due for a promotion. See? Said the one on the right. Let's just let them through. They'll put in a good word for us. He said it himself. No one's ever put in a good word for us before. They opened the gate for us without further discussion and we walked through it. Be careful, Gregor, the skeleton guard said from behind us. There are booby traps everywhere, and enemies around every corner. The shrill scream echoed through the dungeon once again. It sounded so familiar, like a woman I knew. Who is that screaming? I asked them. The skeleton guards chuckled. Why don't you ask your friend? I looked over to see Brad standing there with tears in his eyes. He was shaking his head and saying, sorry over and over. What did you do, Brad? What did you do? It wasn't my fault. I found the game. I opened it up and I looked at a card. I just wanted to see what it would say. And what did it say? Noel asked. The game's begun. It's all in motion. So find some friends and drink the potions. Find the one the goblin stole before we eat her heart and soul. Get to the finish, save dear mother, for one does not receive another. We stared at him, still not comprehending what he was telling us. I went upstairs and my mom was gone. She was just gone. I think that's her screaming. I think maybe goblins took her. When were you going to tell us this? Noel was yelling, grabbing him and shaking him angrily. You knew this game was evil, and you brought us all into it. The board game was a medieval fantasy themed one called Dungeons and Darkness. But now it wasn't a board game at all. Now we were inside of it, as total batshit as that sounds. I didn't know this was going to happen. How could I have possibly known? Before we could argue any further, the wall behind us, to our right, collapsed in with an explosion of fire. We all backed up quickly and ducked as stone blocks went flying, landing all around the tunnel with loud crashes and bangs. Suddenly a figure in a blue robe came flying in through the hole. 
His body flew through the air and collided with great force against the brick wall on the other side. He landed on the floor in a heap and groaned. That damn dragon! He was muttering as he stood up, dusting himself off. Oh, hello boys. Long time no see. Hey, it's the wizard! I shouted, happy he was back. He was the first person we had seen in this strange fantasy world. And he had seemed decent enough, even if he had been in a bit of a hurry. Oh man, can you help us get out of here? Noel asked. And rescue my mom? The wizard wrung his hands and made a few uncertain noises. Then he sighed resignedly and picked up his staff. I mean, I can try. I'm not the best wizard. I use a lot of red potions, but I can usually get the job done. He glanced back at the hole in the wall, still smoking. The edges of it burnt and charred. Usually, we continued along with the blue wizard leading the way. The jewel atop his wooden staff glowed with a white light which proved quite useful in the darkness. The challenges become more difficult in these dungeons the further along you get. What stage did you get up to before I joined you? Uh, we just came in the entrance. I kind of sweet talked the guards, complimented them on their... I'm not really sure. They weren't the brightest. Ha! Clever boy! Paladins are typically quite charismatic. Well done, using it to your advantage. I thought back to my character card when we had begun to play the game. Charisma had been one of my skills, as well as one-handed combat. I mentioned this to the others. It seems we had some advantages over our foes here after all, if we used them correctly. Two flickering torches flanked another door up ahead, and we prepared ourselves for what would come next. The wizard went through first and the rest was followed. Immediately the gate clanged shut with a loud noise behind us and we found ourselves trapped in an octagonal chamber. Okay, from my experience, the first stage is almost always SPIDERS! There were dozens of them, huge black spiders the size of dogs and cats. They descended from the ceiling and I saw one land on the wizard's hand and bite him. Green venom oozed from the wound and he screamed in pain. Immediately he fell to the ground rigid and paralysed, frozen in the exact way he had been standing before being bit by the spider. Foam poured out from the side of his mouth and I heard him gurgling. At least he was still alive. Some help he was going to be, I thought to myself. I saw that Tom was already swinging his axe in wide circles taking out several spiders at a time with his huge weapon. Armour protected him head to toe and I saw him make short work of the spiders in one corner of the room. Brad, the elf, was picking off others with his bow, shooting them with effortless skill as his character sheet had promised. Each spider he killed fell from its silken thread oozing fluorescent green blood which glowed and lit the room in an eerie light. Noel, the barbarian, was swinging his club and crashing it against the wall, crushing giant spiders with ease. One landed on his shoulder though, and before he could knock it away, it had bitten him, rendering him paralysed as he twitched on the floor alongside the blue wizard. Only Tom, Brad and I were left, and another spider suddenly lowered itself down from the ceiling. This spider was much larger than the others had been. Instead of being the size of a cat or a dog, this spider was the size of a small pickup truck. Its giant fangs protruded and its many eyes looked at us hungrily. Hairy legs skittered on the stone floors as it prepared to attack. Other smaller spiders came down from the ceiling as well, flanking it on both sides. My heart was pounding with fear as I stared at the massive spider. I knew we wouldn't be able to take it down without anyone's help and two of our party members were currently incapacitated. 
That was when I remembered the red potions Noel had taken from the shop. He had thrown them in the backpack and I ran over and opened it up. I popped off the stopper of the first red potion and poured it into Noel's mouth, glancing towards the giant spider as it began to move towards us. My hand was trembling with terror as I tossed another red potion to Tom. He poured it into the paralysed wizard's mouth while Brad continued to fire arrows with lightning quickness at the smaller spiders closing in on us. His quiver never seemed to run out of arrows. The blue wizard sprang to his feet, red liquid staining his teeth and lips as he grinned ear to ear. Whoa! Oh man, that red potion is good! Gotta be careful with it though can be quite habit forming for an adventurer in dungeons above his skill level. He shouted, lightning bolt! And a bolt of lightning jumped from his staff, striking the giant spider dead center. It sizzled and smoked as the buzz of static electricity and the boom of crashing thunder echoed in the small space, momentarily deafening me and causing my ears to ring. With all the spiders dead, the gate ahead rattled up and opened of its own volition, revealing the passageway beyond. Stage one, said the wizard. Piece of cake. We walked forward as Noel struggled to his feet. The blue wizard stopped and looked back at us. Before we go any further, there's one more question I have to ask of you. We nodded our heads, looking at him solemnly. Do you have any more red potions? Because we are definitely going to need them. Don't forget, if you enjoyed that story, be sure to pop over to the author's Reddit profile and drop them a line, or even give them a glowing review. I'm sure they really would appreciate it. The link to their Reddit profile will be below in the description. Don't forget to check out the merch store. The link will be in the description and also in the video thumbnail. And if you'd like an honourable mention, send in a snapshot of yourself with your purchase and I'll feature it in one of the videos. Have you written a creepy pasta story you would like me to narrate? Have you had any cryptid sightings, paranormal or supernatural encounters or even had a, a creepy or terrifying situation you would like to share? Well I now have my very own subreddit community where you can submit your stories. The link for that is also in the thumbnail as well as below in the description. You can submit your stories there, or you can send them to cryptidsroost at gmail.com. If you wish to remain anonymous, that's fine with me. Now I also have a Facebook group, Twitter, Reddit and Discord. And if you'd like to support the channel and help make it grow, my PayPal is paypal.me slash cryptidsroost. If you wish to remain anonymous, that's fine with me. Now I also have a Facebook group, Twitter, Reddit and Discord. And if you would like to support the channel and help make it grow, my PayPal is paypal.me slash cryptidsroost and any and all donations would be gratefully received. Again, that will also be below. And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is not.